Hello! Thank you for joining me. So today I want to talk to you about something that I think a lot of um, people like me who are immigrants uh, without a family in the United States can relate to. As you know, I've moved uh, to the United States in 2006 fully. First I came here in 2005, so when I moved here I was 19. And, um, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about is partially one thing that I have never considered when I was moving. I do blame it, maybe wrongfully, but at this time I do blame it on my age at that time. I was 19 and if you've heard of the um, saying youth maximalism, I'm not sure if it's widely uh, used in America, but it's widely used in Russia at least. And it basically means that um, uh, young adolescents <laughs> usually have um, this perfectionism in their head and very strong motivations and ideas that um, do not consider any compromises, meaning whatever you put your mind to can be achieved, but you never really consider other things that play into it. <laughs> so you just go for it because it's again to the maximum, which is max maximalism, <laughs> pushing uh, with no boundaries till the end, so to say. And we can talk about that later if you want separately. Um, so at the time of me moving, I was extremely happy. <laughs> I was so excited to start a new life and I saw, I don't know, I just was floating and I just felt like ha I had wings and things were happening and I couldn't Im imagine what could go wrong and honestly I didn't consider one thing that could go wrong and it was wrong of me to do that. I was not very thoughtful and um, I do forgive myself for that uh, at this time because I understand how young I was um, and also I, I grew up in quite a, a family that a lot of things were allowed for me and most of the things that I asked for were provided to me so I never um, maybe was as considerate as I should have been of other people's thoughts. So now it takes me to the actual topic of the video, which is my relationship with my family. Um, we love each other greatly and honestly, they're just my blessing. Um, well, one thing, as you might uh, know, I've always lacked is this mother figure in my life, somebody of a mentor um, status in my life. A person that could help me sort things out and I think I've been looking for that because again in my earlier days I had my parents all the time by my side and they could actually see what I was seeing. Once I've moved here it was virtually impossible uh, for them to fully recognize what I was dealing with so I was left alone to make my own decisions most of the time and make my mistakes most of the time because of that too. Um, when I was moving, one thing I did not consider is my mom's feelings about me moving. And I did not know about it until a couple of years ago, where I actually got a chance to talk to her deeper. Um, and we opened up to each other, it was quite a, a bonding experience. But then I realized um, that I really had never cared what she thought when I left. Okay, I promised you to stay cool, so I'm staying cool. Because <laughs> the conversation about it is more important than my emotions about it. Um, but I think um, one thing I have failed to do is to ask one time um, how she was feeling. Uh, when I moved, it was 2006, and there was no Skype. Um, we didn't have uh, fast internet, at least not in Russia. My parents didn't have um, inter quick connection, so we couldn't really do any kind of interaction besides just phone calls. And if you're an immigrant, you also know how expensive those damn phone cards were. They're like $40 for an hour or something. It was very expensive. Um, I couldn't really afford to spend much, so I would talk on the phone with, with them for maybe an hour a week. 
And as you can imagine, it's not really a conversation. It's more of just kind of throwing the news at them, but not actually having a deeper understanding of each other's position and actually feeling the emotion that they're feeling through possibly looking at them, which is what the help of Skype has created. Mm. We started Skyping probably closer to 2009, so a few years down the road. And um, we pretty much exchanged through pictures that I would send them in mail, or they would send me in mail. Um, because again, for the same reason, the internet was not sharing pictures quick enough yet. Uh, so <laughs> just there was this constant miscommunication. And um, again, I think I was so preoccupied with my own destiny and my life and how I felt in this um, mm, new marriage later and um, how I had questions about it and I, I didn't know how to answer because I felt like anything I would say would create an aura of my failure meaning so I moved here, I left everything behind and I'm almost <laughs> pressured to succeed no matter what because otherwise what was the point of you moving? And I always felt that, um, that I had to, again, prove myself to everyone of like the reasons why I moved <laughs> and to provide the proof as much as I could in my decisions. And because I think a lot of people were questioning why the hell did I move? What the hell is wrong with you? And I had to show them this is why I moved. This is why I moved. And now I'm living this life and I feel like it's a better place for me to be. So I have to justify a lot of times. So a couple of years ago, my mom told me that um, she actually went through a huge depression when I left um, because she didn't know what was going on with me, like again, on the deeper connection with me. Uh, she knew on the surface everything was fine. Obviously, I'm alive. <laughs> so, uh, But nothing really else. They didn't know the, my divorce was coming because I was trying to um, conceal a lot of things uh, again under worries of failure um, and when it all came crashing down it was kind of a point of me opening up about everything too and them opening up about it too um, so my mom told me that she went through a huge depression she gained a lot of weight uh, she said she couldn't sleep she couldn't eat for a few years she constantly was worried about me and um what I'm doing and how I am um, and it's horrible but again the worst thing was that I never I have never thought of hey I wonder how does my mom think like of me I wonder what she thinks like there was never that there was always this again facade for me put on like a strong woman pushing through got my shit together um, don't dare to question me kind of thing you know and uh so I think I have built myself this character, which again I'm very proud of because I feel like it's it's leading me to a better side of me personally, of myself. But again, I have kind of pushed aside everybody else's feelings. I didn't ask my sister what she thought about me moving and she was always telling me like, come back, come back, we're gonna be best friends again and stuff. And I'm like, no, I have life here now. And again, um, I feel like they were always considerate of what I was thinking and hoping for and was so supportive and I was kind of just like I'm not even gonna acknowledge what you think about it um, and again I didn't know about it until she told me and that's when it kind of all came crashing down on me and then I, I realized uh, why I'm searching for this mentor for this woman all the time and that's basically because I didn't have my mom um, when I was going through my actual adulthood, early stages of adulthood. So I can imagine people who don't have parents or um, who don't have good relationships with parents as well. But I've kind of, again, I feel like in a sense, maybe I have created that for myself. Um, so recently when they would come visit me um, in the la latest years, we tried traveling everywhere and I try to put away money to the side for traveling as much as I can. Um, because I, I feel the lack of this family closeness all the time. Um, 
so every time they would come here I try to impress them and show them uh, this is where I live now and this is all the beauty around and look how strong I am look how I'm, I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to achieve things and um, they understand it and I think they're, they're very proud of me they do tell me all the time how proud they are of me and how different my life is from theirs and uh, how um, unique our situation is and again how um, how much they look up to me even in a way uh, because again I, I know that again I have gone through things and I don't tell you everything obviously but um, again certain um, certain things they are just very proud of me uh, um, one worry that I have is that when I do have my family um, if I will have some kind of karma built up that I have kind of ruined my mom's um, uh, health because of my ignorant decision to move like that again without any consideration and um, I always worry that <laughs> I'll end up the uh, same way or end up being overprotective or something I don't know I hope I won't sorry it has been an emotional video I apologize I did not plan it to be uh, I'll stop rambling but if you are an immigrant and you also don't have your parents with you please make sure you check on them like not just like hey how are you doing but actually find time to sit down with them and ask about their feelings ask them how they are how they're feeling what they think about you honestly that you moved have you changed do they see positives and negatives in you moving and um, what would be the best outcome and how can you both work on creating a deeper connection as a family even through the distance with each other and not just like oh hey i bought new shoes oh hey i bought new car or whatever else like this is my boyfriend whatever it is but just actually sit down with them maybe do skype with one person at a time and just talk to them hey how are you how's your health how are you feeling what did you think when i first left how did it made you feel and I'm telling you it's gonna bring a lot of interesting conversations that you did not expect to have it will give you a deeper understanding of who you are today because a lot of your worries a lot of your insecurities right now could have been built up throughout these years because of that miscommunication and uh, it will also again teach you how to be a better person because it's just nice it's just good manners to ask other people how they feel and then actually consider their feelings and their thoughts um, that's one thing i would tell myself if i was if i was talking to my 19 year old self i would tell her hey make sure you talk to your mom about this and like actually ask her hey mama what do you think honestly what do you think what would you hope for me um, if I don't go what what do you think my life will be like so you can both make parallels and be honest with each other about different things and make a plan together and not just you pushing hard for your own success mm. so <laughs> I'll stop on that and again sorry i got a little emotional it's it's a little emotional topic obviously and i don't think i'm still recovered from it from these realizations but i have asked a million times for apologies and again i, I do my best to um give my mom time and and my sister as well um so thank you for watching i hope this was thought provoking for you and interesting as well and maybe a good insight into who I am too because I, I love to share myself with you guys um, and then I, I love to hear your stories as well that maybe inspire you um, so <laughs> yes 